So maximizing your profits is key to making money in this industry. Anytime that you can save money while you're on a run, that equates directly into profits for you. One of your biggest expenses when you're on the road doing a run is going to be your fuel cost. And there's a huge difference if you're dealing with uh, maybe a $2.50 a gallon versus $3.05 a gallon. Uh, when you're filling up. One of the things we do in this industry is we install an auxiliary fuel tank that allows us to go longer on a single run and it allows us to kind of pick and choose where we get fuel from. We can choose to go a little bit farther and get fuel for you know cheaper, 25 cents a gallon, 50 cents a gallon cheaper where we're getting a good discount uh, rather than having to stop wherever the gas gauge tells us we have to stop at. So that's what I'm doing uh, today. We're installing uh, an RDS 91 gallon fuel tank uh, into the bed of the truck. Uh, and we're gonna kind of walk you through it. There's a lot of install videos on how to put these things in. I'm just gonna give you the, the main gist and tell you what I like about this tank and what I don't like about it. Um, and then you can make your own choice on, uh, on what size to get and what finish to get and things like that. Uh, there's a lot of different sizes and it's going to all depend on uh, what your budget is. Uh, I ended up getting this 91 gallon one for uh, a really decent price and um, I looked around a lot looking for them. I didn't get the finish that I wanted, uh, but I got the size that I wanted. I wanted the biggest that I could, uh, just about the biggest that I could get. So here it is. Uh, it is the RDS uh, 91 gallon auxiliary fuel tank, gravity feed for diesel. I wanted the diamond plate one, but it wasn't available and it was going to be two months before the diamond plate version of this was available. So I ended up getting just the raw one. Uh, it actually ended up being about a hundred and maybe $125 or $150 cheaper. Uh, and I could have it right now. I ended up getting this thing in like four days delivered to my house. Uh, let's see. It is get it to focus there. Um, it's the RDS 71790. Uh, it's fully DOT approved. Uh, it's got the gravity feed um, connector right there. Uh, let's see, what else? On the top, it's got the nice locking uh, filler cap. Uh, you got vent hole, your, uh, or your vent bung here, because you have to run a vent. Um, it's got some other connectors and a place for a fuel gauge. Uh, these are for if you're going to put an electric pump on it, uh, so you can pump it, pump it out. Uh, this is for a fuel gauge. Um, this one over here is also for a uh, type of pump. If you're going to do a manual pump, uh, the bigger ones that have to screw in there. Um, but all in all, looks pretty good. It's got mounting tabs. Uh, they're not pre-drilled. Going to have to pre-drill those myself. Uh, but other than that, not a huge thing. It did come with the mounting kit that gives you the uh, the insulation tape or the the rubber tape that goes between the the tank and the bed of your truck. Uh, it's got uh, some long bolts and some springs you have to put in to keep it so that it can move while your bed flexes, and you don't want it rigidly mounted to the bed of your truck. If you mount it to the bed of your truck. The bed of your truck will flex and it will flex the fuel tank and it will actually break the welds on the aluminum fuel tank. Another thing that I purchased was the install kit. Um, it comes with the connectors. This one's specific to Ford. Uh, you can get the Dodge ones and the Chevy ones also. Um, but it comes with the uh, rollover valve installed in it. Uh, it's got the shutoff valve that screws into the side of the tank, various clamps, the instructions, and your hose to uh, tie it into your fuel system. <laughs> so my wife just came out to check out my new stuff here, and she says, it's not shiny. And I said, yeah, I know, that's all that, uh, that I could get. I couldn't get the polished aluminum diamond plate one. <laughs> She says, I know you, you're gonna polish that, aren't you? Yeah, I probably am. It's just, the, I can't handle aluminum look, that looks like that. So we'll get the buffer out and we'll probably run a, run a buffer over it. Maybe sand out a few of the scratches and make it all shiny. 
All right, so not a huge thing, but this just pisses me off. The stickers that they put on stuff just doesn't come off. They just need to like post-it note glue. They don't need glue that you gotta deal with all this gunk. What a pain in the ass. Nobody wants that sticker on their fuel tank. I wanna take that sticker off and now it's gonna be a big pain in the ass to do it. RDS, get better stickers. So we got the tank installed. And there she is. Like I said, I'm not doing a full like step-by-step -step install. They're actually really easy to install. That rubber stripping that I showed you goes on the raised area of your uh, bed. You just cut it to the right length and then clean the area and stick it down. I just cleaned it with some alcohol and then stuck it down. The tabs are not pre-drilled, so you have to pre-drill them where you want the holes to be at. So there is one that holds it there, and there's one that holds it down there. So we drilled through there. And then there's one on the opposite side that's the same. Now on this side, you also have to drill a larger hole through your bed in order to get your fuel line through there. In order to do that, I used a drill bit that looks like this. If you've never seen these, these are called step bits. Uh, and they're, um, they're awesome. Uh, if you're drilling plastic or sheet metal or sheet aluminum and you need a big hole in it, rather than buying a giant drill bit, you get one of these and it, each one of these steps is a different size. And this one goes from a quarter inch at the tip and it will eventually drill a one and three eighths inch hole. They come in sets with uh, different sizes. This one will go up to a 7 8 hole. So if you drill all the way through with this bit, it leaves you with a 7 8 inch hole. You can buy the whole set for the cost of like one 7 8 drill bit. So these really work uh, work well. Um, I use this, uh, this small one all the time when I'm drilling into aluminum and, uh, and doing work like that when I'm doing fab work on the Jeep and things like that. So uh, these step bits, bits are just fantastic. They make uh, drilling through sheet metal and plastic a whole lot faster. Um, I'll put a link in the description to a set of these things and you can get yourself a set. They usually come in a set of three. Um, obviously, I, this one, I had the three here, but I lost one and then I bought just a single one to replace it. Um, but these ones are titanium. This one is just high speed. Uh, but they work great. So now on the other end of this, it's pretty simple. You have a rubber hose that goes to your gas tank or your fuel tank. And then you have that adapter that you buy. It comes with two of these rubber uh, connectors. Your application might be different than mine. You might have to cut your steel line and then add both. You add a rubber connector and then this part and then another rubber connector to the other piece of your steel. Uh, on this one, uh, I was able to just cut the rubber hose, stick the adapter in there, put a piece of rubber hose here, and then uh, clamp it to the steel. It comes with all brand new clamps and everything that you need to install it. There's a rollover valve right here on the top. Uh, this is the fuel line that runs up through this hole. I've got a brass elbow there that makes the turn because it was a little sharp. And, uh, and I went into the tank on the other side. Super simple install. If you need to put a grommet in here because your fuel line runs through there without a piece of brass there, you can take a piece of this line and cut a chunk out of it and then just slice it down the side and put that in there as a piece of trim and it will buffer that, uh, that fuel line in there really good. Uh, you can buy a grommet too, but you can do it with a piece of this rubber hose. Um, now when I was opening up the hardware kit, uh, I was talking about springs and bolts and things, and here's the mounting. Now you have three of these. There's one here, one on the other side, and then one in the middle. But you've got a long bolt that comes through with a nylock, a washer, a spring, and another washer. And then on top, you've got a washer, and then obviously the bolt coming through. You don't tighten it up all the way. You just kind of snug it up so that it doesn't move very much. And that allows the fuel tank to move independently and vibrate up and down uh, from the bed of the truck. Uh, if it was bolted directly to the bed of the truck, as the, the truck bed flexed and shook, it would eventually crack the welds on the on the aluminum tank. So you want it to be a little bit, you want it to be separate. 
So the operation is pretty simple. Uh, up here you have that shutoff valves. When you have the tank, you have your upper tank full, you just open that valve and it drains fuel, gravity feed down through here, through the rollover valve and fills your tank. And it just keeps continually running fuel down into your tank and keeps your main tank uh, full. Really easy install. Like I said, I'm not gonna do a step-by-step. -step. I just wanted to show you the gist of it because it is uh, a in, uh, pretty easy install. So if you got something good out of this video, click the like button, click the subscribe button, leave a comment down below and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. And as always, have safe travels and I hope to see you on the road.